Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, today is a cold and windy, blustery, weather terrible day. Uh, so, I thought I would uh, get things ready for field target season. Actually, I have a match in Oklahoma City next weekend. I'm going to be going to. Weather looks good uh, compared to what's outside today. Uh, so, and I'm, I was redoing uh, my range card. And I thought that might be something to make a video on. Uh, there's no real written formula, so to speak, on how to make a range card. Uh, if you're new to uh, field target and particularly hunter field target, which is my main focus, that's what my videos will be on. Um, uh, it's an information card on basically how much holdover you use uh, based on distance that you range to your target. And so what I'm going to share with you today is how uh, I go about doing a range card. Uh, I've seen a lot of different range cards that, that uh, guys use, a lot of different methods, and they're going to be wide and varied. Uh, and obviously you need a place to start. And I think, uh, I think if I put this little video together that it might be beneficial and helpful to you. Uh, particularly if you're new to the sport and it's like where do I start how do I do this uh, so uh, let's get started and I'll I'll show you how I do mine okay so one of the first things that you need to do is collect some data about the uh, about your gun so one you know the weight of the pellet that has to be determined it's usually printed on the package or uh, on the container that it comes in the other thing that you're going to need to do is you really need to be able to chrony your gun because you need to know what the actual speed of the pellet is not what the manufacturer tells you what your buddy tells you what you read on the internet because each gun can be slightly different so if you have access to a crony, you want to do that. You want to use that information. So we're going to fire a couple of shots here. This one, we got one at 890. 8.89. Usually, a couple, three shots is all that you really need to, uh, to go by. You can certainly do a complete shot string. This is just kind of what I do. And that one is 887. So we're going to take an average of that, and that's what we're going to use. We're going to put that information in chair gun uh, along with some other information. I'll show you how I do that. This is how I determine the center of the barrel to the center of the scope. It's really not rocket science. Uh, you can do a lot of crazy measurements, but it's literally this simple. The center of the scope rings typically be the center of the scope, give or take just a tiny bit. And then I can eyeball this and see that the somewhere right in here is about the center of the barrel, right there, be the center of the barrel. So I can take in from the center of the barrel, the center of the rings. I mean, I could call it one seven eighths, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for this application, I'm gonna call it two inches. And really, that's all the trouble you need to go to. You can go into Chair Gun or your favorite app and um, change those measurements, and you'll see that it makes little to no difference. So, again, it's not real rocket science. You don't have to get the calipers out. Just take a, a rough measurement, educated rough estimate, of the center of the barrel, the center of the scope. And for putting that information in the chair gun, that should work very well for you. Okay, everyone, I thought in uh, this segment of 
uh, video, I thought I would show you how I determine what my zero is for my particular gun. And having used several guns over the course of shooting field target, I find that the, it varies just a little bit, um, anywhere from 25 yards to 30 some yards. Uh, typically it's going to be right around 30 yards. So if you were to zero your gun for 30, you're going to be very, very close. But I want to show you how I arrive at that number to give some validity for what I'm going to show you. Okay, so I've got the chair gun app on my phone and I'll show you what I'm doing here. So let's come into focus. So you can see over here I've entered the speed of the pellet. I have the height of the scope and that is the center of the scope to the center of the barrel or the bore. The optical center to the barrel center. Now this number is not critical mass. If you download this, you can play with some of these numbers and you can see that it's not terribly, terribly important because we're only shooting to 55 yards. Okay, so that being said, I've entered all the information I have. Uh, you'll notice that it's at far zero is at 29 yards. Now far zero is also known as far point blank range or PBR. And let me, let me um, illustrate that for you. Okay, so I can turn this up and let's get it on one yard okay so you can see something that's critical here is the POI in dots so you can see that, let's look over here on this side, over here. So you can see at 10 yards, it's something like 2.2. If you look over here at the, at the dots, the POI and dots. And I'm gonna scroll up slowly so you can kind of see this. And you can see it starts turning to zero. So we said that PBR was 27, 29, I'm sorry, PBR far is, is uh, 29. So you can see that that's the red, the red all the way across, that's zero. That's the far point blank. So if you look again, if you look at the POI dots, you can see this is telling me what my holdover is. Now something else you can do too, is you can look at the distance. And this will give you an idea too, uh, how critical uh, it is in terms of measurement. So if I go down, let's for just a moment, let's let's look back here. And I'm going to pick out a number. So if we look at uh, 21 yards, at 21 yards, the point of impact is 0 0.09. It's not even a tenth of an inch. We're shooting a pellet that's 177. So if we look at say 19 yards, that's the that's the pellet diameter right there. So let, let's go and let's look at what the further one is. And this is what I'm, I'm going to illustrate here is the flattest trajectory. So if we continue to scroll up, we can see that that runs all the way out to about 31, 32 yards. Uh, the, the where you know, it's called a pellet diameter. But you can see that the dot holdover is minimal. We have a pretty flat trajectory right in there. And ultimately, that's what we're that's what we're wanting to achieve. We're wanting to get the flattest trajectory possible. Okay, so how we're going to do that is we uh, do that. We said it was 29 yards. Well, how that's achieved, your scope actually looks through the trajectory of the pellet. Okay, so the pellet travels out, forms an arc, and comes in contact with the pellet. Now, the zenith is the peak. That's where the pellet actually starts to drop off. That's as far out and all of a sudden the pellet loses its energy and it's starting to drop off. So that's going to be the zenith. The zenith is where we want that minimum. That's where we want zero uh, kill zone. Uh, and you'll see that in there. Kill zone of one inch is the default of that. So that, what that would mean is that's the zone, the area, the diameter in which the pellet will impact in, within a one inch circle. So we're going to be shooting at different size targets, and you can use that if you want to, but ideally, minimum, it's going to work better for you. We have near 
PBR, PBR is point blank range. That means you just aim at it, it's going to hit it in the, on the near side. And the same thing with the far PBR, point blank range. So ideally, these two points we want as long as possible. The longer, the better. Because our goal is to have the longest and the flattest trajectory for our target. So inputting those numbers into chair gun is, is how you can achieve this. Now you can use chair, without even going out and testing what, it, what the holdover should be, you could go off a chair gun. But there is going to be a slight error in it, I found. Uh, it's not going to be exact because there's several factors that go into this. So you really still need to go out and do your testing of your gun at those given distances. If you don't have access, time, or ability, um, again, you can go off of, of chair gun and, and get fairly close. So knowing this information, you have the line of sight that is looking through the trajectory of the pellet. You're near, you're far, you minimum. And minimum should be pretty much zero. And I'm going to illustrate that. Uh, let me go back into the uh, app here. I want to share something with you. And that is done in optimum zero range. So we touch optimum zero range and you can see zero is what I have in there and you can see those distances near PBR, near zero range, far zero, zenith obviously, and then far PBR. So those numbers from 24 to 30 basically are telling us that your aim point is going to be at the intersection of the crosshairs. So you're going to be safe right there, but we need to determine what those distances are from 10 yards to the near PBR and from the far PBR to the 55 yard marker in that, in that range. So that is, that's what I use and how I achieve it. And um, we, I'll go out and like I did on that other video is I test these numbers to see. I want to prove that that is in fact what it truly is and not go just off the mathematical calculations that chair guns give me. Well everyone, I, I hope that segment was helpful and beneficial uh, to you. Uh, Knowing what your zero is and what your holdovers are is very important to um, having success in shooting field target, hunter field target in particular. Um, it's fairly easy to do, and, and, but knowing where to start and how to do it is, is very, very important. Um, and I was going to show you the card that I came up with uh, in, this, in doing this segment because I was going to redo it anyway. And so that is my BSA, it's an R10, I make notes on it. And that's the pellet that I use and the, the ranges. So this is your basic range card, that's the information. What I'll do is I'll laminate this and then put it on a lanyard, that way I'll have it handy whenever I'm, um, I'm getting ready to shoot so I can have it as a point of reference and look at it. So if you go back and review how to make the uh, tape for your uh, scope wheel and how to determine your holdovers, you're bound to have some level of success that you would not have if you would have just gone through it and tried to figure it out for yourself. And I want to thank everyone for watching uh, my channel. Uh, if you're new to this, please like and subscribe. I do have some other videos I'm going to have coming up and uh, I'll definitely share that information with you. So until then, um, shoot straight, Hit all your kill zones, and above all, have fun.